Hello friends and uh, welcome. Today I have for you this uh, wonderful, wonderful set. It contains a mechanical pencil and a beautiful, beautiful fountain pen. This set is from the 1950s and uh, it was uh, produced in uh, Czechoslovakia. It is solid silver. 835 so this set is a very rare set 835 silver oversized fountain pen it is also known as the parkley this is a very rare set i will focus on the fountain pen initially it is also known by the name of barclay barclay company was originally established in the 1930s by Carol Barth in Prague. Barclay Company was known for making luxurious and good-looking um, pens of high-quality workmanship. The Barclay Company was uh, nationalized in 1948 and uh, then it was incorporated in a central pen a public company since 1948. It seems that the Central Pen was a merger of 12 different pen companies by uh, the government. This model is the model uh, 305, but um, the 304 model was made by Barclays right before World War II and the name was continued with the Centropen after the war. Practically unlike many others, the Barclay trademark was preserved as a luxurious sub-brand of Centropen company. Interesting that both of the model uh, 1304 and this case the 1305 Barclay pens were produced in a PNL uh, factory in Pardubice. After the nationalized process, uh, uh, it was um, the main uh, factory of Centro Pen. This is the silver version and it is a beautiful, beautiful version. You can see the shape, which is particular to the 1950s. It's a cigar shape or a torpedo shape. You will see that uh, this uh, shape is um, almost identical to the, uh, one, to the model 146 Meisterstück from uh, Mont Blanc. It has this unusual retrofuturistic streamlined design. It has this beautiful, beautiful pattern you can see. And it has the hallmark of um, silver 835. So 83% of a pure silver like i said it is a beautiful design of the 50s the cap it contains one breathing hole which was specific of that uh, period it also has this beautiful beautiful clip it has also a hallmark i hope you can uh, see I will do a picture and maybe we can distinguish what uh, is the hallmark is for you can observe that this clip is plain silver it hasn't um, this um, pattern the cap ends in this uh, plastic I believe it's a plastic or um, celluloid part and it also had at the end one piece that it is missing from my um, model. I don't know if um, uh, it wa was a jewel uh, like the Parker 51 or other um, symbol. 
I will try to find pictures of uh, this model on the internet and I will insert them in the video for you to see uh, its original form. As I said, the, the cap has this beautiful, beautiful pattern and it ends in this um, line, simple line. And um, we have 835, we have an S and a P are marked and um, S1P stands for Centropan and PAN stands for uh, Prague. The cap is a screw-on cap, it unscrews and we can see the um, grip section and this interesting part and on this interesting part we have imprinted the model i hope you can see it's 1305 and um, 809 initially i thought that 809 was the sub model but no it is an um, factory number so each pan has another number this is 809 and it has this asterisk symbol also imprinted you can see that um, the lines they are not made out of uh, plastic like uh, those parts but are made out of metal this is an interesting interesting element that distinguish this fountain pen you can see that this fountain pen is a luxury product because of the attention to details. Most of the fountain pens made um, during the World War II period and also the beginning of the 1950s had um, a steel nib, but in this case, we have a beautiful, beautiful 14 karat nib. It is imprinted, repet, as you can see, let me focus. So C Z A C H O S L. This particular nib is a, a so called commemoration nib of the famous. Uh, repet nibs of the 1930s that were made in uh, this region. This particular nib, it's a wonderful made uh, nib. I've tested it and I can tell you it's a semi-flex nib. A beautiful, beautiful nib. You will see at the writing sample how fine it writes. Okay, the body continues with um, this barrel section it has also this rare and ornate like a wave guillacher pattern a beautiful beautiful pattern and it ends symmetrical with uh, this cone shape part an interesting element of this fountain pen is the filling mechanism it's like an aromatic filler um, it is an interesting um, filling mechanism and I must tell you that this is the first filling mechanism of this type that I have in my collection. It has this uh, transparent plastic part and you fill the fountain pen by simply pushing this element. The barrel unscrews and it reveals the inner sac and i want to show you the inner sac it looks almost like an accordion and you push on it and um, the sac contracts and it fills up uh, the ink you can see it's in beautiful shape i hope i never have to change this part I don't know if those sacks uh, are still available in production. You can see that it's glued on here with shellac, and I believe here with shellac. So uh, 
it is a tight and uh, a pressure uh, system i must tell you that uh, i didn't fill this fountain pen so it is as i uh, bought it i've used indeed the um, neighbor but only dipped in ink so this will be the first time that we will see how this fountain pen feels and i hope we will have a pleasant experience of course uh, you can see that there are debris of ink but um, i think i will use uh, also uh, blue ink so i wouldn't um, need to clean this part as you saw I think it's uh, rather difficult to clean this uh, fountain pen, but we will see. This part screws back on. Sorry, I forgot to show you the beautiful ebonite feed. It is quite a simple feed. You can see we don't have a concave uh, firm here, but the grips, um, the um, lines here, the metallic lines, help us to have a nice grip of the fountain pen i will close the fountain pen and i will uh, briefly show you the mechanical pencil you can see it's full of hole marks on here the same beautiful beautiful pattern it has also a clip it is also hole marked and um, it is a plain clip and you can see at the end of the body we have 835 and s1p like we have on the fountain pen and the end we have this uh, plastic um, button that uh, had the role of uh, pushing the reserve uh, why not uh, i will try to dismantle this uh, model you can see this part here okay let's put it here we can see the uh, shape of the um, pencil holder i'm i'm not a fan of mechanical pencils i hope i don't uh, break it also this part can be removed and of course if you turn this part we it reveals the whole mechanism including this spring here and uh, this uh, mechanic um, part i don't know if it's okay we can um, also fiddle with this part i'm not an expert i don't want to ruin it so i will put it back together maybe one day i will uh, find the right um, reserve for this particular fan as you can see it has this plastic uh, uh, part um, it's quite uh, interesting uh, we unscrew it back i have put it back together as I told you, I don't know if this mechanical pencil is functional. Maybe I will send it to a restorer to tell me what can be done about this beautiful writing instrument. When I bought the fountain pen, I've told you in the previous video with my new acquisitions that I paid um, uh, 180 euros for the set. For me, it's a rather uh, high price. Of course, uh, this set um, costs uh, 200 or 300 euros. It's still a small price. In comparison, let's say with uh, this model, this is a Mont Blanc from the 1950s. And if this Mont Blanc was in a version of solid silver, believe me it would cost uh, five times the price that uh, the market um, has set for the centro pen don't get me wrong centro pen is a well-known brand a communist brand but this barclay fountain pen has its roots back in the 1940s and it is a luxury product 
that um, could be compared with a Mont Blanc Meisterstück 146. I wanted to show them side by side because um, they are very similar, similar in shape and um, form the same torpedo shape and even the similarities with the end of the fountain pen. Of course, this is a piston filler and you saw the mechanism on uh, uh, this one. So uh, different mechanisms. This is the beautiful Mont Blanc and this is the Centropan. You can see that uh, there are also differences in the nib size. On the 146 we have a number 6 nib, two-toned nib. On the other fountain pen we have a repeat commemorative uh, uh, nib. It's a, it is a much smaller nib. At the end of the Mont Blanc we have the famous key slope type ebonite feed which is my favorite all time feed and this has uh, also an ebonite feed but it's um, simpler of course the material on the 146 is celluloid and on the Barclays Anthropan it is solid silver I want to show you side by side different uh, models so I will put the Mont Blanc here. Next to it, we'll have the Centro Pen. I have um, entry level fountain pen, a Caveco Dia 802G from the 1950s. The same shape. I also have a Pelican from 1954, 140, a dark green, also in the form of a torpedo or a cigar. We have an iconic fountain pen from the 1950s. We have a Parker 51. And uh, why not to, let's say, contemporary or more modern um, design. This is a Lamy from the late 60s. And let me see if I have room for one more fountain pen that I wanted to show you side by side. And uh, the, we are, I am talking about the Sovran M800 model with the classic green stripes. So I will put them side by side. The dimension is very, very similar to the Mont Blanc 146 from the uh, 1952. But it shares, uh, we are talking about the design, the shape, the same uh, torpedo shape or cigar shape of the 1950s. The last two models, the Lamy and the Pelican M800, are more modern designs, but um, I wanted to show uh, them side by side. Also, I will leave on the screen the dimensions, both of the fountain pen and of the mechanical pencil and um, after that we will have the writing um, sample I will do the writing sample only with the fountain pen I don't have reserves for the mechanical pencil and I told you I don't know if it's in a working uh, shape it appears to be functional but uh, I don't have um, many information about the mechanical pencil. I will leave this aside and we, we will focus on the fountain pen, the beautiful, beautiful fountain pen. You've already seen in the dimensions that uh, although it is a solid silver fountain pen, it uh, doesn't weigh a lot. So um, it was thought to accommodate every aspect of the writing process. So if you have a wrong writing session and you think that um, your hand will get tired, no, no, no. Of course, it doesn't compare with a celluloid model because being solid silver is a little bit um, heavier but uh, not as heavy as to give you problems 
with um, long writing sessions you can choose to put uh, to cap the fountain pen and you can see that um, it uh, caps wonderfully it has um, like a clicking system but um, it doesn't scratch the beautiful beautiful um, pattern over here so you can choose to post your fountain pen and it looks uh, beautiful in the hand you can see but uh, you know that I choose to especially on my vintage fountain pens to leave the cap uh, right um, near the fountain pen and to simply write with it like this now we are ready for the writing sample but first I've prepared a glass of water because um, I want to clean this uh, fountain pen so it is my first time that um, I'm uh, using the system so I will simply push on the uh, this um, uh, plastic part and see if it draws the water let's see you can see that um, there are some um, residues of ink and I'm not sure if I'm I will simply push uh, this um, bar and hoping that um, it will flush the ink let's open it the um, bad part about this thing is that I don't see uh, if the ink is being drawn or the water is being drawn you can see inside uh, that we have a tube like we see on the aromatic systems so i think this part was made to show us that uh, we have ink on the sack because the ink is stored here but also in the sack and we can't see the level of the ink being restored in the sack another thing is that i can't simply um push this um, uh, sack because um, you can see it uh, it bends and that's why i need this uh, barrel so the barrel acts like a wall yes it's clear that we have um, ink still in the mechanism i think i flushed it enough i have here the parker quick ink uh, so you can see we have a blue ink uh, residue here and i will choose also a blue ink the parker quick ink okay so simply insert it in the ink one okay there was some bubbles i will use this tissue to clean the fountain pen let's clean also the water here let's get rid of the water don't forget to close your ink bottle to avoid accidents and uh, now i am ready for the writing sample first i will test it let's see if it's okay okay what do we have here we have a uh, this is a um, semi-flex gold nib and i hope i can show you that you look at the tiles they move as i push them around i had a little problems with the camera and it didn't record all um, that uh, i uh, said 
This is a 14 karat repeat commemoration nib and it's a beautiful semi-flex gold nib. This fountain pen is an example of a beautiful, beautiful time in the 1930s when in the region of Bohemia or Czechoslovakia, the fountain pen producers, among them the Barclay, competed directly with their German counterparts. This fountain pen, uh, let's say this set, I must confess to you that um, this is the most expensive uh, set in my collection. Although on the market price, the Mont Blanc is more expensive than this fountain pen, I must tell you, believe me or not, I paid less for the Mont Blanc than I paid for the Centro pen. But I wanted to share with you guys a beautiful, beautiful example of an European producer of luxury fountain pens. Although this is a communist product from the 1950s, it has all the characteristics of the model from the 1940s, the 1304 model. This model 1305, like I said, uh, retained lots of the luxury characteristics of the Barclay pen company and um, it was released in the 1950s, a period when the communist products um, tried to compete with the western products and they delivered quite a quality product. Of course, um, in the 1960s and the 1970s, the quality of uh, their products decreased, like all the communist products. They were um, not defeated, but uh, they were um, left behind by the progress of the Western products. But this is a beautiful example of a 1950s luxury product made out of uh, silver. Of course, you don't have to pay uh, thousands and thousands of uh, euros of dollars to buy a 146 made out of solid silver. You can go for the central pen. Indeed, the only inconvenience that I see on this fountain pen is that it has a slighter uh, small nib and uh, the filling mechanism it is um, different from the piston filler of the Mont Blanc. This was my review of the Central Pen Barclay. Thank you for your time and see you at the next video. Bye bye.